With Black Adam finally coming out and people still talking about Restore the Snyderverse on Twitter, I thought it wise to revisit this. Was this film that good to have people still talking about it to this day? And to have Henry Cavill back as Superman? I am back as Superman. I decided to go back to the beginning. From what I remember about this film, it was just okay with lots of product placement and explosions, but why not give it another chance? There might be something I missed here. But first I needed to give my dog Kylo some loving. Kylo. You're nothing, but not to me. I love you, buddy. So once I started the movie, I was surprised at what I experienced first. In this film, the journey of Clark Kent is a profoundly lonely one. Growing up, he's different from everyone else, he's confused, and he's constantly getting bullied. Then he finds out that he's not even from this planet. It's another way of saying that it's not from this world, Clark. And neither are you. Could you imagine having that feeling as a teenager? You already feel isolated and alone. Now there's truly no one on the planet who understands your journey. Every moment where he's taking steps to become the man he is destined to become, it only pushes people away. Case in point, saving the bus. Well, I think you're blowing it a little out of proportion. No, I'm not. Lana saw it too, and the Fordham boy. And this isn't the first time Clark's done something like this. Having that much power and being afraid to wield it shows what kind of character Superman is. With the power to bend the world to his will, Clark learns emotional restraint. I was low-key hoping he would put this guy in his place. If anyone deserves a Superman slap, it was this guy. While I was progressing to the first and second act of this film, I was interrupted by something or someone that put certain aspects of this film into perspective for me. My boy. Miles arrived from daycare and demanded to be taken to the park, so I must oblige. While I was enjoying my time with him, I couldn't shake the next emotional beat of this film that hit me the hardest, and that was fatherhood. You can sense the confusion in Clark's dad, Jonathan, as he wrestles with how to deal with the fact that his son is Superman. Clark, you have to keep this side of yourself a secret. What was I supposed to do? Just let him die? Maybe. His son is already feeling like an outcast and being discovered by the world before he was ready would have his worst fear truly realized. Choice of whether to stand proud in front of the human race or not. Can I just keep pretending I'm your son? You are my son. Nothing hit me harder than when the fight occurred between Clark and his dad. You can see that Jonathan knows that Clark isn't yet ready to be revealed to the world. He's still a rash and hot-headed teenager, not yet wise enough to deal with what's to come. And though the circumstances of Jonathan getting stuck in the car were kind of hokey, I couldn't help but tear up knowing that Jonathan would rather die than risk his son being revealed to the world before he's ready. That's fatherhood. So we went home to finish the movie and I was attacked by my furry dude, Kylo. Sorry I left you, buddy. Traitor! The first half of the film was strong and packed with emotion that left me invested on who Clark would become. Then things started to take an unexpected turn. The film starts to fumble. Zod arrives on Earth and he demands to see Kal-El, Superman, Clark. We stumble through some oddly placed exposition that occurs during a dream sequence, so we're not sure if it's actually real or not, but they use some sort of mind thing to talk to him and it was just all kind of hokey and kind of weird. Zack Snyder loves himself some dream sequences, that's for sure. Despite this, there were some pretty cool fight scenes that had me throwing popcorn at my face. During the fight with Feyora, I thought there was some weird commentary that felt out of place. The fact that you possess a sense of morality and we do not, gives us an evolutionary advantage. She didn't know enough about him to know that he was laying his life on the line for morality, but maybe I missed something in that weird exposition. I don't know. Ah uh, yes, there's the product placement I remember. While it's realistic to include real life brands, I thought it kind of takes you out of the experience to see Superman fighting and all of a sudden there's IHOP. After the fight scene, I think we have the most shocking moment in Superman's history but I'll get to that in a minute. There was also some strange bit of story talking about Clark's blood having all of Kryptonian's DNA in it and the fact that their atmosphere negatively affects Superman, which I thought was some creative liberties I don't really recall from the comics, but I haven't read all the comics, so I'm not sure if there's something there, I don't know. But through all this, a theme from the beginning of the movie returns, with fatherhood. Superman's real dad returns in the form of an AI played by Russell Crowe and tells Clark he must make a decision to guide humanity in a new direction or give Krypton another chance. 
I really enjoyed the fatherhood themes in this film, perhaps because I can kind of relate, though my son is not Superman, he's still my son. But Jonathan raised Clark, he molded him to become a good man. Jonathan's death sent Clark's life into a spiral with no direction. It wasn't until this moment in the film where Clark got his true purpose, but the ending left me feeling uneasy about Superman as a character. Now Superman in my eyes watching the animated TV series and the Bruce Timm Justice League, Supes always stood for beyond good. He was just the ultimate boy scout. He stood for the best of humanity, so I definitely felt uneasy when it came down to snapping Zod's neck. I just felt like Superman could have done something different to prevent killing him. Like he could have jumped, he could have covered his eyes, he could have done something different. But I guess that wasn't the direction. I think that the director and the writers were probably going for the shock aspect here, and that's definitely what they got. Overall, I have to say that I thoroughly enjoyed rewatching this movie, and I can say unequivocally that we should, in fact, restore some aspect of the Snyderverse. With superhero films being a dime a dozen, it was so refreshing to see Superman have such human connections and human emotions. So if this is the direction of Man of Steel 2, restore the Snyderverse.